another week, another weekly reader. That's going to be uh, the weekly reader for things that are going to be happening in the Warframe, from Nightwave to Tashin and so on and so forth. There will be time codes in the description below if you want to skip straight to a certain section. Now I do want to mention real quick that if you are watching this video right when it comes out, this will, this is the last day, half a day, whatever, to enter the Wisp Prime Access Giveaway. There will be a link in the description below, feel free to enter again this will be the last day to enter. I'll be drawing the winner sometime tomorrow. And in case you guys are wondering why I'm using Furuna right now, it's because I actually did a YouTube short involving Furuna. If you want to check it out, feel free to check it out. But without further ado, let's... We are going to start with none other than... Nightwave, yep, Nightwave. Now I've done some Nightwaves. I still need to do a bunch more, but I've been working on it. I've been working on it. Let's see, the first one will be complete three exterminate mission. That relatively easy. Complete three spy missions, okay. Complete well, it doesn't say complete. Polarize a weapon companion or warframe, not in the simulacrum. So as long as you're not in the simulacrum, if you use a former on a warframe, a companion, or a weapon. And this, I believe, does work on the Necromech, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, complete five scans. For Cephalon Samaris, this works if you're in a group with other people that are completing their scans. It's not only your scans, it's whatever scans you're in the radius to complete. Then we have unlocked four Dragon Key Vaults on Deimos. We have complete eight Railjack missions. I probably won't be doing this. Not a super big fan of Railjack missions, if I'm being honest, but we'll see. And then finally, complete a survival mission reaching at least 30 minutes. I might do this because I am a big fan of survival missions, as it were. Now let's see credit offerings. We will start with these. Okay, Steel Charge, definitely the best one to pick up out of all of them because Steel Charge has 9 by default, which will give you 18 capacity instead of the 14 that just about every other ore does. I think there's one other ore that also has 9 and gives you 18, but most of them only have 7 by default. Maybe they'll change that one day. Who knows? Who knows? And then we have Warframe, alternate helmets, as well as skins for weapons and these emblem and emblem thingies that you can get if you so wish. Vauban. Orkin Catalyst and Orkin Reactor, these are fully built by the way. So you don't have to worry about it because they don't say blueprints. So you'll get the actual Catalyst and Reactor. And I just want to say that the Wolf Beacon. The Wolf Beacon sometimes appears in Nightwave and this is currently the only way to get the Wolf's sledgehammer so you might want to pick up this beacon so you can actually farm out the wolf sledgehammer and then finally we have a bloof bloofs don't always appear in here but when they do they definitely do 
Now, without further ado, let's see what Tashin Hologram Tashin had to offer. But I do want to mention that he will not have this option if you have not completed the whole unlocking the steel path. I have a whole guide on that. Feel free to check it out if you so wish. We, oh, we do have enough to buy this. I was going to say we don't have enough to buy this because we spent most of our stuff getting, um, you know, Wisp Prime as it were. And that is what he seems to have for the selection. 30,000 Endo for 150 still essence. Doesn't seem too shabby. Doesn't seem too shabby at all. Now let's visit the circuit, see what it has to offer. You can get Ash, Frost, or Nyx, which is interesting because Ash actually was very hard to get at one point because the specific enemy was the only one that dropped his part. So it's nice to see that he's a lot easier to get now. So you can definitely get that if you so wish. And then moving on to the steel path, you can choose these any from any of the choice of these five weapons. I'll probably go more into detail on this in the future, but these five weapons are special in the sense that you can, there are new weapons added, and I believe that you'll be able to purchase them if you don't want to farm them out. I'm going to pick the two just because, but I'm probably not going to do this week's at all. So, definitely, yeah. Now let's check out Archon Hunt. Now I'm curious how many of you guys actually do Archon Hunt. I've been meaning to get back into them. I like went super hardcore when they first came out, but I haven't been able to get back into them. We have Mobile Defense, Disruption, and Showdown. Showdown will be facing this Archon. And this will go up by 20% for each time you fail to get a Tau Fort Archon Shard. Once it reaches 100%, you will guarantee get one. If you get one before it reaches 100%, it will drop back down to 20%. And they are based on each color. So, and last but not least, Cause Garrison. Let's see what Chipper has to offer, shall we? Amber Archon Shard. Now at this time, um, Cause Amber Archon Shard has a 0% of, or Chipper rather, Chipper Shard had a 0% chance of being teleported. I think they should add like either a chance to be teleported or like pay some extra stock to give it a chance at being teleported. I think more people would do the call type missions. And speaking of the call mission, same, same for me because of the fact that I did not do calls mission last week. And if you don't do cause mission, it won't reset the next week. You need to complete it at least once in order for it to reset the next week. And I have not been doing his mission. So, yeah. But with that said, I'm going to end it here. Hopefully this helped you. And with that said, I will catch you guys in the future. Later. Girl.